Hi. Uh, this is going to be a short walkthrough tutorial on how to install all the tools for the Crow uh, Eurorack module onto a Windows 10 machine. So we're going to install Druid so you can use a live REPL and interact uh, with Crow as it's running. And we're also going to look at how to update the firmware on a Windows machine. So, uh, to get started, we're going to go to the monome.org site. From here, you can go to the documentation docs over on the left. Um, we'll find Crow. This is our module here that we're going to be getting running. Um, and, you know, there's lots of really great information here. Uh, a good script reference over on the left uh, once you start to get familiar with the device. But before we can do that, uh, we need to install Druid. So Druid is this terminal application, but it also has a few extra utilities. So you can update, uh, upload scripts, um, as well as updating firmware and uh, interacting live. So uh, if we scroll down, we're, we're going to get started with preparation. Right? So Druid is built in Python, and we distribute Druid with the pip system, which is part of the Python ecosystem. So we need to install Python. Uh, on a Windows machine, um, we're going to be down here. We open the Microsoft Store. Um, right, and we're just going to search for Python. Uh, we want to get 3.9. There might be a beta version, but just ignore that. You want to get 3.9 is new enough. Uh, so all you do is click Install here. Microsoft will try and get you to log in. You can just cancel that. Um, then we have to wait. I think it's about 30 megabytes, 35. Got that nice speedy internet. Uh, and the product is installed. That's it. Um, there's a button here. Don't click it. That's to do, that's, that's like Microsoft stuff. You don't want that. So that's it. We're done. Um, now, in order to run Python, we're going to use PowerShell, which is the kind of Windows terminal application. But before you click enter, you want to actually right click it and say run as administrator. And this is going to give you some extra permission to, to use the USB ports and stuff. So uh, we want to test that Python is installed and that we have the right version. So we type Python dash capital V. And we'll see here, Python 3.9.6. That's great. Um, if you look in the instructions here, we just need 3.5 or newer. So that's going to be fine. Um, and, and that's it. So Python is now installed. We have Python running on that machine. Uh, so now it's time to install Druid. Scroll down to the Windows instructions. And really, we're just going to do some copy and paste. Uh, we're going to grab this set. So this is installing some uh, libraries that Druid needs. Then with this line is going to upgrade upgrade some uh, setup tools, which allows us to actually run our installation, which is this third line. You know, does a few things in the background, but that's it. There's lots of lots of stuff you could read through, but you can probably trust that it's working. There, there might be an error if you see that. You might have to look at it, but in general, it should be fine. Um, just a note: uh, in the future, if you ever want to upgrade Python, you'll need to Again, copy and paste uh, this one line. Now, we could do it now, but it's, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to print a bunch of stuff saying that it's already up to date. Uh, okay, so that's it. Druid is now installed. Um, but we're going to have an issue. If we try and run Druid, we're going to see this problem. Druid is not recognized. What that means is basically uh, this PowerShell can't find Druid. It's not that it doesn't exist. It has been installed, but we don't know where to look for it. And that's to do uh, with this thing called the path variable. So this is a little complicated, but um, it's, it's actually just like one little trick you need to know. So if you read through these instructions, it essentially says, find the thing that looks like this warning, and then we'll, we'll show you where to put it. So if we scroll up a little bit, um, this is an upgrade command, so it'll be before that. And we'll see here, warning. The script druid.exe is installed in this location, which is not on path. 
And that just means that the terminal's not gonna know where to look for it. Uh, so what we, all we have to do is grab this, control C to copy it, and then we're gonna um, go to the start menu, we're gonna type path, and this should be the first result. Edit the system environment variables. Let's do that. Pops up this window, and down the bottom here, environment variables. And then we'll find here, up in the top part of the window, path. So double click that. And then this is basically everything that Terminal can access. At the moment, it's only stuff in the Windows apps folder. So we want to make a new entry and then control V to paste in a Python location, which is where Python will put everything it installs from pip. And then OK, OK, and OK. Um, we can, in PowerShell, if we try and run it now, it'll probably still not work. And that's because we need to restart PowerShell for that change to take effect. So again, right click, run as administrator, Druid. Ah, there we go. Okay, right now we're seeing Druid disconnected. Um, I'm just going to restart the modular case right here. I think I might have been doing something beforehand. Okay, there we go. So I just I just turned the power off and back on, and we see Crow connected. Uh, no user script. Yours might not say that, but as long as it says Crow connected, that's what's important. We can then type uh, caret caret v, which uh, you can see the little tip there. It tells you it's the print the current firmware version. And this crow is on version 2.2.0. So that's not the newest one. Um, if you don't know what the newest one is, uh, there is a trick to test it. Um, but you know you could just use this right now. You know It's still going to, this is still running. It's running version 2.2, which is great. Uh, we could do some arithmetic. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. Um, Q will let you quit out of Druid. And we want to do that because we want to find out um, if we can update the firmware. So to update the firmware, it's a little bit more complicated on Windows, but we can walk through it and it should be not too, not too bad. So you can type Druid firmware into PowerShell directly, not inside of Druid. And this will this command will try and update the firmware of Crow to whatever is the newest version. We'll run it. And a few things happened here. So we, we checked for updates. It's gone online and looked up um, for any new releases. The Git version, this is basically the official released version online. It's version 3.0. And local version is what is happening on our device in front of us right now. So currently the, the Crow is on 2.2, but we can upgrade to 3.0. Um, Druid has downloaded that 3.0 version. It's uh, enabled the bootloader, and a bootloader is kind of the, the small program that allows you to change what's in the memory of the device. But then we see this error. PyDFU didn't find Crow. Um, and that's going to happen on a Windows machine if you if this is the first time you're doing it. So that's the thing we're going to work through now is making it so that our machine can talk to, to our crow, um, specifically when it's in bootloader mode. So to get the instructions, we're going to go back to the monom.org docs. And on the left here, uh, you're going to want to do crow update. Uh, so we'll see here, there's a Linux and Mac OS install, it's not what we want. Instead, we're going to go to Windows, and it's a little bit longer, but we'll get through it. So basically, we have to do two things. We need to install a driver for Crow's bootloader, and we need to install this libusb DLL file. Uh, and after that, everything should be working smoothly uh, into the future. So uh, the first thing is the WinUSB driver using Zadig. So the first thing we want to do is put Crow in bootloader mode. So we'll go back to PowerShell, open Druid, and we'll, we'll see here that it's Crow is disconnected. And the reason for that is when we tried to update the firmware here, we actually enabled the Crow bootloader. So Crow is already in bootloader mode. If it wasn't, 
um, you would run Druid and type carrot carrot B for bootloader. Um, but this won't work right now because Crow is disconnected. And disconnected usually means that it's in, that it's either there's no cable in or it's in bootloader mode. So we can trust that we're in bootloader mode and move on to download Zadig. You just click the link, it'll take you to this page and you wanna come down to the download. It'll just save this file and then we can just open it directly. Um, so you'll see here, I'll go back to the instructions so we can follow along. Um, but you'll see down here that we have this list. Uh, it's showing Crow DFU bootloader. If it doesn't appear, you can try clicking list all devices. And you'll scroll down and find Crow DFU bootloader. If it says Crow telephone line, that means it's not in bootloader mode and you'll need to open Druid and do the carrot carrot B to get there. So let's click DFU bootloader. On the left is what we currently have as the driver, which is nothing. And on the right is what we wanna, uh, what driver we're going to use for this device. And it'll automatically select the WinUSB version 6.1. Um, and that's perfect. We can just click install driver. It will look like it's frozen for a second, but everything's fine. This typically takes about a minute to, to kind of get all installed. It might be, Longer in your machine, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so this is basically just making it so that when you're in bootloader mode, Crow can talk to your machine. Like, so Windows knows which driver to use to talk to it. Um, if, if when you first went into bootloader mode, um, it might have popped up a thing saying, we need to install a driver for this device. Um, instead of saying none on the left here, it might actually say this STTUB30. But either way, it's fine. The same, the same thing. Okay, installed successfully. Close that. We can close Zadig. We're done with it. Um, and that's it. We're finished with this step. And now we just need to install the libUSB DLL. So we're going to download this. This is direct from our GitHub, so you don't need to worry about it. Um, you can just click this download button here, save file. That'll probably be updated. It might just download the file directly uh, when you get to do this. Um, but it downloaded to here. We'll find this. Um, and I'm just gonna extract it uh, in place. So let's do this and that opens up another window. So we have this file here, libusb-1. Uh, I'm just going to copy it, so control C, and then we're going to go to uh, our local disk, users, and then my username is just the letter T. Um, so this is where all your documents and downloads folders and stuff are. Um, but we're going to create a new folder called drivers. Um, so we can go into this folder and now paste. Okay, so we've put this li uh, libusb file into this folder here, but this folder isn't special. This is just a, the name I decided to give to it. You could put it anywhere on your machine, but this seemed like a place where I would kind of think to look for it in my user folder in a folder called drivers. So in order for this to take effect, we have to do what we did before, which is add it to the path. So let's go back and type in path, environment variable variables, double click path, and now we have Windows apps, we have our Python installation, and we're going to create a new uh, entry, and we're just going to browse to find it. So T is my user folder, and then this one here, drivers. Click OK, OK, OK. Okay, and that should do it. Uh, so I'm going to close all of this out, bring PowerShell back, and I'm going to close this again. We need to restart it. And we're going to one more time try run as administrator. And now, for the moment of truth, Druid firmware. Okay, so um, 
it does say here no crow found or it might be in bootloader mode already it was already in bootloader mode uh, we downloaded the file um, and then this basically this process happening here that was it updating the firmware um, exiting DFU update complete so now if we type druid everything connects fine and we can type carrot carrot v for version 3.0 that's it so um, that's the tutorial if you have if you walk uh, walk through this whole process and get stuck at some point come and join us at uh, 8lsinarow.co the lines forum um, you can just do a search for update probably and you'll find a, a good thread to post in otherwise you can uh, join the nons study group on discord I'll put a link somewhere all right thanks so much everybody <laughs>